Good evening. You're tuned into NECC's Rainbow Six Siege Legends Division. My name is Binks. I'm joined by the absolutely full quarterback. A riveting matchup coming up between your St. Clair Saints and Columbia College. So it can be a great matchup. How do you feel about everything, Corbeck? Oh, hi, Corbeck. Well, you're, you're speaking in mime right now. Um, however, I can tell you a little bit of teams if we go and take a look. I, I think we can go and take over at your St. Clair to start off. Um, However, if I don't get that, then I am more than happy to talk all about our map bands, which first up, we're going to be having us go <laughs> all the way over on to uh, Oregon. Uh, not, not Oregon, that's our decider. We have a border to start things off. Should be a really interesting one. I think we should have starting on the attack for... Oh, I'm looking at the wrong map bands too. That's... Uh absolutely brutal i'm cutting in and out hopefully that does go away welcome to week one of the necc just uh figuring everything out as we go along god um, all right i think oh. i'm back <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right all right whoa okay do over my microphone literally died and literally the minute you were like and corbeck how are you i was like right at that moment my microphone stopped working but uh yeah no it's all good i'm looking i'm looking forward to the game today uh looking forward to another season of necc right like that's something to, yeah. to always look forward to legends division top talent some of the top talent on display for the collegiate region it's it's amazing it's always a lot of fun to watch these co collegiate players at work because you know at the end of the day this is where the next like the level of talent for rainbow six siege is going to come from and uh, the the grinder is always hungry they always want more players up there so looking forward to seeing kind of what young prospects are out there banks uh for our map bands i believe it is going to be oregon cafe chalet am i right on that one Yes, you are. I, I finally, I, I that was on me. I had the wrong page pulled up, and uh, yeah, maps do make a big difference. So Oregon is going to be the first map we are going to, and uh, I think it's a really good, comfortable map to start the season okay. off. Uh, start everyone in their comfort zone and say, "Okay, show us what you got." Yeah, it's your it's your bread and butter Rainbow Six Siege map, right? Like that is the uh, that is the standard. Like, or honestly, Oregon and Cafe, both of them have kind of moved it. Oregon has always been there, right? Cafe has slowly advanced to the point where it's like a stando map. Everybody knows how to play it pretty well. It's very, it's it's complicated, but in terms of a siege map, it's relatively simple. It's, you yeah. know, three floors in a box, <laughs> uh, basically. Uh, and Chalet has become, I think, increasingly a favorite for a lot of teams at every level of the game. I was doing some pro, you know, stuff yesterday, and they were playing Chalet pretty much every single match. So uh, not surprised to see that one there as a potential de decider. And I mean, I think, you know, both of us would love to probably speculate about like who's gonna win or what these teams do, but unfortunately, Binks, like we don't we don't have that much info. It's just the start of the season. Yeah, we have new new teams, new rosters potentially coming up, and uh, it, what I love about a week like this is that th this is the vod that other teams are going to be looking at. This is going to be uh, a chance for you to set a name for yourself here in the NECC. You want mm -hmm. us to be leaving this game and remembering your name, and yes, that's a lot of pressure on the players, but I think they're here to give us a good show, and I think that's exactly what we'll, we'll be able to deliver tonight, but uh, as everything goes flying... <laughs> It's okay. It's, it's organized chaos, at least. We've got a framework. There's just chaos within it. So sometimes that is the uh, that is the case. But yeah, I mean, it looks like our players are ready. Hopefully, we'll be stumping, jumping into the game really soon. We'll get an idea of what Oregon is going to look like. But first, we'll take you through our rosters here. Here's the St. Cloud Saints. It's Rapid Blunk, one of my favorite names, I think, so far. Yeah. Corey Rob, Salty Boy, and X Terror, or Y Terror, I'm sorry, uh, leaning in right there. Got my Ys and my X is confused. Love that Saints logo, by the way. They're a uh, team that I think has participated, too, in NECC before, so should be interesting to see what they can do here in a new season. Yeah, moving on over to Columbia College. We have Techwell, Cappy, Bear, Maple, and Scoob. So a lot of fun names. I, I got to give you credit. The first one that you said was absolutely wonderful. But once again, looking for Columbia College to really prove themselves. They have a nice little CC logo. Um, I don't think that is the correct roster, though. I can give it to you here. Uh, we have Ghostly, Jason, Landis, Nubs, Oni, Philly, and uh, Serutan. Or Serutan. Um, we, we, it, 
we don't know which one of those them are going to be benched not playing really <laughs> looking forward to to seeing how this works out but Corbett, we're not here for the rosters to keep on diagnosing and seeing what we can come up with. We're here for a match, and we should be getting into it very, very soon. And do you have any final thoughts on Oregon? Uh, you know, we, we'll talk about it, obviously, as the map progresses. But like you and I said, I think the big takeaway from Oregon is this is a map that everybody should know, right? Yeah. And when I say everybody should know it, I mean you should know your takes. You should know your defensive setup. Like, this is legends, right? So <laughs> the, these are guys who are playing high tier like this is as high as it can get in NCT. So you would expect them to have basic holds, basic principles down pat, and they should be able to expand out to some more uh, expansive defenses and, and what have you. Um, so could be interesting. That said, nobody's probably going to be reinventing the wheel here on Oregon today. That is usually not what happens on Oregon maps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Flores is a typical band that you can see, and I think that's mainly yep. because of his ability just to clear out Blue Bunker. The moment you get in there with a the Flores drone, all of that util, Jaeger ADS, it's all shut down. And yes, you could have to forcibly take the mute, but uh, always easy to get rid of it. But Dokabi, on the other hand, is one that I'm more surprised to see. Yeah, Dokubi has increasingly become a more popular ban, right? Like, the Dokubi call is so good to provide information to your entries um, that she's really stepped into her own as an operator that people don't want to deal with. And speaking of operators that people don't want to deal with, <laughs> Fenrir, one of the newest operators going off the board right there, should not surprise anyone. He has become a staple defender, a really effective class with a lot of flexibility. And you know what, Binks? You can say the same about Azami, too. Probably yeah. the strongest defender in the entire game right there getting banned well that it's someone that can mold a site to their own desire it, it, it's so very cool to see it and all the different setups you can come up with near endless possibilities of course some better than others but um as long as someone who can actually change we talked that Oregon's not going to have much change that's actually someone who could change it uh our, we're not going to see it and first round is going to be a second floor dorms main hall as well as kids pretty standard lineup for the defense the only thing that Attack we know won't be changing uh, i'm interested spot. to see what sort of extensions they go for i i know warden has really settled into competitive play especially for that 1.5 but will they opt for an extension into attic or not yeah, that's the thing about Warden, right, is he has become sort of the, the new flashy defender. The MPX and the 1.5 just make him too good not to pick, uh, even with his gadget and its, you know, variable utility. Uh, nothing in this defensive setup particularly surprising to me. This is this is all pretty standard. The, the most kind of interesting pick in this setup uh, is probably the Aruni or the fact that they're having Ute do hard breach denial. But uh, in this day and age of the game, Binks, uh, hard breach denial is not the priority that it once was. Uh, people don't care as much about blocking the wall. They're kind of a given that your walls will get defeated and you'll have to play around them. And that open sight line there, uh, looking out into a Trophy is a good example of that actually on the bottom of your screen. You're already playing with it partially open, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, good for easy extensions, but early assessing from Columbia, all things actually stayed alive through the prep phase. Really nice to see that, and it looks to be a very structured approach as we're going to have the Ayana of CC already making their way, joining themselves in down below, as well as Lion. I like this little combo because if you see the information gathering that is possible, CC already opening up the first kill of the game onto rapid this is a great little opening and clearing up that roam on the first floor is gonna be the first step for nabs to use the ee1d and just completely control their way in through second floor hallway yeah only doing a good job there providing a little bit of covering fire right for nubs who had sort of pushed up past the point of no return to those armory stairs uh this is a dual side push you're seeing it right here landis is providing some support on the other side ghostly is here too playing a bit of a slow amar all things considered, but one that I think is primarily built to build up some pressure here on Blunk. Blunk tries to swing, does get one down and finishes a flurry of violence right there, but Blunk is caught out by the other angle coming into uh, Attic, and it's just a f so much death. I don't know when know what's going on. Absolute chaos since about basically the two minute mark here, and it does settle down just a little bit. Is now Landis is engaged in a gunfight, but it's Corair on the other side who gets the kill now terror steps up and gets one more and suddenly it's a 1v1 and the pacing of this banks has just been out of control yeah, you have to take a second to slow down a matchup 
Montaire swinging in through Dome's main hall, looking towards Bunk as it's going to be a rotate from the Ace of Surgeon. And it does look to be captured on a camera, is immediately looking the other way, but perhaps not. That could have been a weird sound call that was utilized 50 seconds ago. Great opportunity to rotate, but is going to be spotted out on the camera. This makes all this rotation feel as a bit of a time waste because you're dealing with White Hair, who's going to have the opportunity to swing. Playing that pro angle, there's no information available. There is a drone, possibly. Yep, two drones available for this ace. Not going to elect to use. So I'm swinging up, not expecting the player crouched on the floor. And this is going to be a gunshot. And there's a spray from White Terror. Great use of just the movement in this game. And I actually really like St. Clair's approach to defending that site. And it will result in them winning the first round. Yeah, you know, that was a bit of a risky decision there from White Terror, all things considered, going prone on the angle. I don't necessarily think that that was a bad decision per se, but it's one of those things where, you know, if they check low first, like they don't fully go up the stairs and you can't land yeah. the headshot, you are basically, you know, screwed. But didn't work out that way. Good first round for St. Clair. I think the thing was that became very chaotic very quickly uh, for both teams. Really descended into sort of the realm of just like pure gun skill to a certain extent and trades, which is obviously a very important part of the game. But I, I think I'd like to see a little bit more structure. Uh, just in general, rather than the kind of all hands on deck, everybody see what you can do sort of approach. But we'll see. Maybe St. Clair Saints have something a little bit more uh, bigger in mind here. They are after actually going for the elbow extension uh, to try and control Blue Bunker right there. Relatively standard defensive setup for Oregon Basement. Yeah, not too much to highlight here. We can go and look at the operator selection swaps from Columbia. And of course, there's still 15 seconds of change, but I, I have a feeling that Nubs and Ghost might be sticking left. to those swaps. I want to highlight Nubs switching to Ying. It's, it's a really good operator Five selection, but you do have that counter of Warden, which will make it a little bit harder if you are able to properly maneuver around. It's going to be Warden going out. If you're wondering why would you do that for a spawn peak, that's actually to get rid of any drones. This is something that St. Clair has been very aware of denying. And it's something that Columbia has been really, really good about saving all five drones, once again, making it through that preparation phase. And that, that's something that I, I think a lot of teams struggle with, just being able to have the proper Attackers utility in the, the form of, of information that drones provide. So having it here looks for a very structured seed. And I, I kind of want Columbia, I want Columbia to show off how they're utilizing those drones because I see it. Yeah, drone work is so important to the game, and it is one of those things where I think as you move up the ladder of talent for Siege, you learn more and more about how important drones are. Um, they're probably the most valuable aspect of the game, honestly. Uh, and a team that drones well will always have a bit of an advantage against teams that, you know, aren't droning well or what have you. And the, the illustration right there, actually, I think is perfect. Uh, terror, ter White Terror taking down really early there, and that's nothing but good drone work to make that happen. They actually also forced Rapid out of position very early on. Similar principle, just droning forward right here. Now, Nubs could be a little vulnerable. I don't think they've droned quite well enough, but faster on the reflexes than Rapid and secures the kill. Yeah, that's a very nice pick. Great way for Columbia to open things up. And CC going down early on has already been brought back to the oh land of the living. Boy. And they'll be able to continue out on the push. And that's the perfect operator to go down and be able to get back up. CC can just sit behind and keep on sending that Gemini Replicator in. Factor EMP will cook out. That means that meeting halls hatch will be opened right on up with a minute 15. This is a absolutely amazing push from Columbia. Five stars, in my opinion. Three defenders left. You cleared out their two roamers. And this gives you a full minute to rain fire from above. And you know, if you look at that, the Thatcher EMP is getting cave trick. This is something I've not seen in a very long time, Corbeck. And this is absolutely wonderful because it looks like the cave trick of Salty Boy will actually pay dividends in denying any access to electrical. Yeah, it's not normally necessary, right? Like, that's the thing. People don't usually do cave tricks because you don't need them. Like... The hatch game is not so important that you actually really need to invest a lot of time and effort into it, but it looks like it has at least forced Columbia into maybe a little bit less favorable attack right here. 
Long sight line with the shotgun there from the Kaid, but can't pull it. Cor Cor Corey Rob steps up and takes one. Corey Rob gets another salty boy on the action as well. And the huge man advantage that Columbia had evaporates like so much smoke here in the last couple of seconds of the round. Sarotan stepping forward. We're secure the kill onto Blunk, and now they're forced into the plant, whether they like it or not. Corey Rob getting taken down. Good cover here by Landis. Out comes the Nitro Cell attempt. It does get Sarotan down. Salty Boy just needs to swing hard here and finish it off. But I think they're looking the wrong direction. Yeah, very interesting. You have no point notification. You know the Sarotan's down, but you do now hear it. You can confirm that kill. He's going to miss it. You have no idea where that remaining attacker could be. You have all these estimates that you could use. But best thing you could do, go for that revive. Now you have Corey back in the action. You have 15 seconds, Defenders maybe more like 10 to use seven to get onto that case. You're gonna have to rush right on over. And look at this, Lindis has perfect line of sight. Spraying, finds one, trying to find the second one. Able to find Salty, sprays right back, seven, six, five. The round's going the way, the Columbia just off time. Swinging right on down, spray is not enough. Lindis also to confirm that kill. Great round from Columbia. They were a few roadblocks, but you know what they did? They just continued to drive right around them. Yeah, the actual Columbia execute right there struggled, I think, mightily, yeah. all things considered. I mean, they lost, you know, two bodies going into that or two or three bodies going into that. It was pretty ugly, uh, but it was a good kind of plant, post-plant scenario play there from the members of Columbia. The good rotate back, you know, up the stairs uh, by Landis, kind of just keeping him guessing. I, I can't necessarily knock Salty Boy either for the way that they tried to play that out, uh, but the, the reflexes, the coverage, it just wasn't there at at the tail end and they will go back down to the basement here for a second attempt and i mean honestly uh as much as i do say that teams should probably shift their site prep right like you don't want to keep going back to the same place over and over again if it's not working out the basement is such a strong site on oregon that i think you don't have much of a choice yeah uh one thing that i, I do want to circle back to is last round when we had that cake tricking so i think that's something that actually tripped columbia up a good decent amount the fact that they had to go and rotate to laundry the last second which is not something they were looking to do they weren't prepared to push down from five seconds to insertion uh big tower stairs but they were still ready to go into supply through electrical and seeing that as a viable route so interesting to see a, a different priority of the where they're going to be pushing but we're going to see a reattempt at defending team. this basement site can st Clair go and fix what was wrong with the previous setup any thoughts corbeck because everything seems to be almost identical i mean they should genuinely be able to you know get a win in here they nearly got it right i mean realistically if you look at the course of the last round very important change here needs to be that Y terror does not die early on like, you need the presence of the Roamer, you need the presence of the Warden, you just need that kind of threat orbiting up here in Security Hallway, and it looks like he's doing a little bit better job of staying alive. He, at the very least, needs to get to the two-minute mark. He, he cannot die earlier than that, and if he does, that's a bit of a misplay, honestly, on the side of the team. Terror exchanging some gunfire there with the MPX. A lot of good drones coming here from Columbia, putting tons of pressure on the defensive roamer, and he will fall back. I mean, what other choices does he have? They will get Ghostly down, though, for the trouble. Good play by Rapid, doubling back in. He has no idea. Yeah, that's a great by trade. The way. Nubs and Oni both able to make their way right on in to secure those kills. That's once again a minute 42. Both your roamers are now down off the board. This is starting to get into a little bit of a pattern for Columbia. So as you start to get hatches open, we'll see if there's going to be a successful Kai trick this time around. I'm quite doubtful about it if you are aware that it is Bob going on as we hear all these hatches opening up. I want to highlight really, really quickly the placement and where the St. Clair Saints players are going to be sitting waiting for this approach. Kai is still waiting inside Blue Bunker. This is not a stagnant push. This is them waiting for the adaptation that have come to expect from Columbia. Yeah, and I mean, I, it was a bit of a silly death, honestly, all things considered for Rapid. I said he had no idea. I had no idea either. 
um, that there was a Thatcher in that vicinity. But what's done is done. You have to kind of look towards your take now. Uh, and the positioning here for the take is not particularly good. They've split, right? They're trying to come in on blue bunker. You've got a good maybe stairs coverage by, uh, I believe that's Nubs. If you can force Salty Boy out of position right here, catch him on a rotation, that would be an absolutely crucial kill here. Otherwise, he's just going to kind of hold this open area, and he really shouldn't be doing that for free, Banks, all things considered. We'll see if this will work out for Salty. Swing around to Blue Bunker. Looks at the one. Isn't even it to collect on the Thatcher. Down goes Salty. Four to two. Man advantage favoring Columbia. They'll start their execute from Big Tower Stairs. Looking a lot like what they wanted to do last round. Bump still waiting inside a freezer. Down they go. That's going to be a quick little trade as down goes Nubs in return. Landis, Seratan, and Oni making their way into sight. Seratan on the Habana going for the plan, but it's not even going to get finished as Oni collects onto Corey. And that's going to be a second collect consecutive round for Columbia. Great play. Great execute. Looks straight out of the playbook. Switch off a of basement now. I think you got no choice, right? Like, you got to go somewhere else. Uh, yeah, and going back up to the top floor, probably the wisest decision they can make. Uh, clearly, Columbia has the uh, has the advantage on those basement takes. They, they seem to know what they're doing. Um, and you go back up to a site that you already run one, perhaps you feel a little bit more comfortable on it, all things considered. I mean, a 4-2 half on Oregon, if you can pull that off, win three straight. It's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a lot more expected, and correct me if I'm wrong, for defense yeah. still to be winning here. Um, yeah, it is. It's a heavily defender-sided map, but I mean, 4-2 would be sort of statistically in line with the defender-sided winning, right? Like, you're not going to get a 100% defender win rate unless you are significantly better than the other team. Yeah, yeah very fair. Fair point, and I do want to highlight that this was the map pick of Columbia College. Uh, so th that, that, that should show a little bit of uh, seniority of sense uh, to who should be performing, but they also had first map picks. So we don't know what the side of St. Clair would have taken, but I'm optimistic to see the second floor approach as it was a little bit of a fluke play from the St. Clair Saints where we had terror prone at the top of the stairs, something that would not work a second time through. It's a one and done type thing. So only time will tell as we approach our third, fourth round of play. You know, it's an interesting choice that's been made here. Um, Nubs is walking in on Rams. So that's the newest operator right there. Uh, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with how Ram works, she has, I think it's called a buggy or a buggy. Never mind, Terror. White Terror just steps out the door, interrupts the lecture. Has nothing to hear about Ram and gets two kills. Easy as you please. Add a third. That's Ram done and dusted. It's rapid. And the two roamers popping off in a huge way here for the St. Clair Saints in round number four. Ghostly, the last one left. Can't land the shot. Still alive. Goes for the shotgun under slung. Gets one and falls back. Chased by the rounds from the other roamer. That'll be rapid on his case. And now he's got an own little deadly game to play here on the top floor. First opponent is going to be Rapid, the other player on the side of St. Clair Saints that was able to dismantle the entire offense of Columbia. Flashbang being sent in, unable to find the player, notices a quick rotate. Great play by Rap to get out of there. You don't need to take this engagement. You don't need to make it a 1d3. They have the information that Ghosty's already a little bit lit. Ghosty has two drones already active in the vicinity that they can use should they see fit. Making their way up, security corridor. They hear the zombie waiting for it. Nitro cells prepped. It's gonna be prepped in the wrong way. And great use of sound. Distraction as Rapid swings out to collect the 3K on the round. St. Clair Saints really fighting back and giving us a show. Yeah, it was a very impressive round for them. Just sort of grabbed the initiative right there and took it all the way. I mean, you can't rely on White Terror running out and getting kills every single round, but they're definitely punishing the complacency of Columbia right there, uh, who I think just did not genuinely expect uh, somebody was going to try and pull a run out like that. And uh, can you blame them? I mean, it genuinely, you would not necessarily expect someone to be pulling that kind of play, but... You know, look, looking past that, such as it is, to the next round, you're going back down to basement laundry. It's not worked out for you so Attackers far. Need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. 
this is around where you would like tear or run out and get multiple kills, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like this is where you actually need it. You probably could have done it the old standard way, you know, the, the old fashioned way up on the top floor. Not probably going to be able to repeat that trick a second time. I'm going to assume Columbia is going to tighten ranks significantly to prevent that kind of thing from happening again. Yeah, I, I think Columbia is going to be able to play together, expecting that run out, expecting those crazy plays. It's like that very first round that St. Clair was able to win. The sporadic choice of prone at the top of white stairs. And this is the last time I'll go back to it, but good play in the moment. You're really able to Five go and trick your opponent. To it. It's that misconception of what are they doing there? It's frustrating to go against. But whoa, 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 we got to talk about this operator selection as the, the, the switch comes in. Nubs opting to take the blitz and ghostly on the capital. Could we see a potential rush from blue? I mean, we could theoretically see a potential rush from blue. I mean, they might be setting up for it here. Certainly, they got the tools in place for it. A blitz uh, right there, kind of the operator for this kind of a rush. Dubs is already in, looking for the initial kill. Doesn't find it. Landis on the cover just the first smoke comes out. Out comes the EMP grenade right there. Very limited success on that. Kills going back and forth both ways. Oni secure is one. Landis looking for another here, but those smokes really slowing down the pressure that's being mounted. Nubs cannot clear the stair position right there instead off to the smoke brute forcing his way onto the site and is killed by an impact grenade and that probably ends the rush i mean there's not much more they can muster now the yeah, rapids forced back to site as terror collects onto landis 1v3 oni stuck bottom boiler stairs slid up from supply so we're going to try to find terror and down they go two to find limited hp case down inside as well rapid sitting inside a freezer swinging around looking towards big tower stairs trying to find a small little opening meanwhile oni made their way into supply holding for that freezer push but it's going to be a matter can st Clair swing this together guaranteeing that 2v1 using the man advantage swinging trying to find the player of Corey swinging around both in main hall there's the swing but there's the 2v1 we are talking about rapid from freezer swings guaranteeing two guns pointing at you at the same time not going to be able to kill both of them that's the round going the way of the saint Clair saints and that two to four split is now obtainable it is and it should be what they end up on here right like they should end up on a two floor split i mean they are unfortunately going to the tertiary bomb site right which is this sort of uh, hardest bomb site to hold, but uh, Meaning Hall Kitchen, you can do pretty well here uh, if you know what you're doing. Also weird uh, to say, it's it's interesting to see how much RAM, that they brought RAM when they were attacking top floor, which mm -hmm. is a place where you wouldn't think that the kind of wide-ranging soft destruction RAM brings would be useful. But then on a site like this, where you could say, well, okay, RAM will tear that entire floor up over that kitchen literally ripped the roof off the place you then do not bring ram so uh interesting decisions being made right there when it comes to operator choices from columbia not to knock them too hard because they do have their two wins it's just interesting yeah could it is correct me if i'm wrong but isn't the device bulletproof uh you know i don't actually remember exactly how it works i I think it might it, be it, it could, yeah. yeah, it could be that you're you're forcing out a impact going towards it and you can send it right on into site, taking out any um utility like barbed wire out of the door. One way that could be used, I'm not sure if that's the best way to be using it, but um yeah, it's uh, explosive or red canister, um, which you, you have to hit. So there is one vulnerability point. Um, however, if you position it properly, force players to be looking down, looking at that. If you're looking down at Ram's gadget, they're not going to be looking up at you. So as this final round in the half is cooking out, a push from the big tower will be the first point of entry and first point of contact for Columbia. Oh, okay. Two to three, the overall score here as we get started on round number six. The last defensive hurrah here from the St. Clair Saints. Castle has helped them restructure this just a little bit to make it slightly more favorable. They're playing a much more constricted defense this time than some of the things that we've seen from them. A good individual performance by Rapid or White Terror is probably enough to secure them a win here, but that is obviously relying on that to come to fruition. Taking a look now as they move 
move in through sort of top floor clear and an awkward moment right there as Y Terror picks up a kill, goes for a second one, won't find it. Good trade back by Ghostly as Landis steps up to the plate as well. The AK-12 finding the kill onto Rapid. Less and less bodies becoming available here. Salty Boy nearly added back to the toll, but will fall back instead and sort of reset in the kitchen as they prepare for the next wave of the onslaught. Not exactly sure what Columbia's plan is here just yet, Binks, but they are going to go ahead and blow the wall leading into stage. Looking to potentially have a stage plan hold from Long blocking off upstairs. Very interesting attempt as Hatch has also been open, but it's very open from the St. Clair Saints holding with, uh, with Long lines of sight over towards Sage. And it seems like they did intend to have some Nitro capabilities, but Blunk being the only one remaining able to do that as Castle is going to actually drop that Salty Boy all the way down in the basement, looking to push their way up. Lung able to take out Landis. That was a big pick. It's with that ace off the board, you now no longer have to worry about that split push as the remaining players are coming from rear stage. Sertan is the one with the case looking to push up. They've made their way into stage. There's a big kill for Corey. Swing around on to the Thermite, knocking out the Collective. Goes the collects their second on the round to finish off Salty. Corey, Blanc, last two players alive. One waiting in meeting lobby, the other Jagger waiting inside the kitchen corridor. Swing gonna have to contend with two of these defenders spraying down. 21 seconds to go. Saratan has to get this plant down. Meanwhile, the Nitro is still in possession of Blanc, who could easily deny that entire round. Push being made into kitchen to switch things up. It's gonna be a quick little trade as Saratan takes out Corey. Five seconds down on the ground is Ghostly though. C4 being cooked out. It's gonna oh, miss. Going for the shot and it's going to land. Great movement by Blunk. Unfortunately, gets caught, but that's going to be a great 4 2 secured for the St. Clair Saints. Nearly disastrous. Nearly, but that's okay. It recovered. No problems. Continue yeah. looking up, right? 4 2. Good way to go about it. That's what I said. They would be perfectly satisfied with a 4 2 coming out of the defensive half. And here we are uh, swapping it around now. And I assume, yeah, we're going to be back up to second floor. Solus making an appearance here. It's interesting to see that Oni is the first player to bring a Solus onto the field. Genuinely surprised we didn't see any Solus play at all from St. Clair Saints, considering how strong of a defensive operator she is. Still on the board as well. Uh, but glad Columbia will bring her to the party because her ability to both shut down drones and genuinely monitor the progress that the attacking team is making is just really, really good. Being said, just genuinely really, really good. Scary good, even. Yeah, it's a matter of having someone who can read your entire opponent's setup and to the point where it's not worth trying to deceive someone like Solus and say, okay, let's put all our drones over here to make it look like that's where we're putting in from. Uh, because you still need those drones for utility. Uh, and of course, that the, the extra ability that those impacts make to, to make your rotate. It's just such a versatile operator. And we can already see that Columbia is emphasizing getting rid of that information that they prioritized so much. Two drones going down, and that's not even a bad number of drones to be losing in the prep base. You still have the majority alive and if you're wondering why I'm, I'm focusing so much on this drone economy is because on a map like Oregon you have a lot of nooks and crannies that you have to clear and especially with a team like St. Clair uh, the St. Clair Saints where they could be going for something a little bit different you want to be aware you want to be able to accommodate for the extra sense of creativity if you will I mean, Ghostly getting caught early by Salty Boy is a kill that the defenders can ill avoid or ill afford here in this situation. He goes down very early. Sets that man advantage just ever so slightly more in favor. Landis, though, does a good job of taking out Y Terror. That'll actually even it right back up. It is the Ash, though, so perhaps a reasonably expendable operator, all things considered, but still not somebody you want to sacrifice early on if you don't have to. Bolt swing in there towards a big tower as they'll try and use this blowtorch here to open up a little bit more of a hole. That's a difficult sightline for Blunk to play, though, considering there are two defenders watching attic right now so double the trouble to deal with as landis is still relatively unmarked here on the bottom floor serutan with a lot of time to spare to send out some of those with my magnets as well and the defense looking relatively strong all things considered i mean they they don't seem particularly fussed landis is still around not sure exactly how st Clair saints are going to deal with the multiple threats they have going here and that's not going to help 
Yeah, they don't have the information required, but they do have the reflexes in the form of Lung taking out Nub. That's going to be very huge, only to clap right back with the refrag, leaving Corey out on the master bedroom balcony to push in, not knowing which line of sight to be watching. Now Salty Boy is forced to reconcile with the actions of his teammates and their Sertan from a completely different angle to go and support. I, I just love the multiple layers to the defense of Columbia there, Corbic. It just felt very well constructed it did and i feel like there was a bit of a uh mis misjudgment there made by the saint Clair saints during the mid round i don't think they ever really capitalized on the early kill that they got i'm not sure exactly what their plan was either right like usually on the defensive side you want to think about it kind of as a checklist you go in you're checking things down right like you go for the first thing the second thing the third thing and it was there and it, it, i just didn't see it i didn't see it and i, I think there's plenty of opportunity for them to work on that right like it's it's just something that when we see that site again in the rotation, assuming that we do, which is highly likely, uh, they're going to want to go ahead and make sure that they have a bit of a better plan on how they want to handle it next time. Uh, dealing with, you know, Landis, probably the next step after you catch out one of the roamers, you don't want to just leave the lesion down there as well. It just makes it harder to do everything else. Very fair point. Uh, moving towards this round, I do want to highlight the Mira play of Sertan, as it seems a lot more of a, an interesting one that we don't typically get to see in there. there you will have the Mute in play, helping to deny any Excyrus pellets that might be shot towards that Mira, but uh, it, it feels as if Mira, Mira's glory day is, is somewhat behind her. Of course, the, yes, you, you are a selector with all these bands being freed up attempt to spawn peak by only will not be successful and please don't repeat that that is just uh, nightmare fuel waiting to happen especially on such great after souls um but it, it's very interesting to see the mira getting this amount of play and it she is very powerful corbeck don't get me wrong um but I, I i'm left questioning is there someone better yeah it's you know fair uh not 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 right you can not you wrong. can work around yeah <laughs> No, not right, not wrong. It's just mid, right? Like, it's not a bad pick. It's just not... There are a lot of operators that are like that. I, I think Legion is another example yeah, of an man, operator where, like, it's never, it's never the worst person to have in a lineup. He's never, you know, he's not the best, but you're never going to see a Legion in your lineup and be like, well, that's useless. So, all good there. Rapid now on the lead, sort of probing this top floor a little bit. Obviously, they're going to have to do a, a lot more work here. It's been a minute into the round, and they haven't actually cleared the Solus yet. That Solus, by the way, in a bit of a difficult spot. Tries to draw back, but just a little too slow. Good follow-up there from Rapid and Terror. Again, sort of the, the fragging stars of the show here for the side of the St. Clair Saints. They're working in tandem to clear that top floor, and now it's on to Ghostly. And who's going to take the first angle right there? They don't play it quite right. Terra gets the kill on the nubs, but Ghostly finds Rapid. Uh, and it's a quick fall back there for the Columbia Defender uh, to try and even everything out with about a minute and 20 left on the clock. Yeah, with not much options to rotate out of sight, you're going to be forced to turtle and just hope that you're able to hold on. And we're sitting right at the 95 second mark looking towards how the push will commence salty boy out of drones great use of all the drones only three remaining in this round terror making their way in through freezer they have explosive capabilities trying to get this cut off meanwhile ghosty down goes salty it means that blunk is now going to be defaulted into that plant position but 40 seconds seven seconds left you have a lot of room to play with spraying down trying to find the option to collect on a frag but all the players at columbia sitting in supply and supply hallway gives such a daunting task all these long angles to hold and not to mention that mira although sertan will go down this is a great pick for the saint Clair saints as they're able to go and maneuver but there's ghostly right back onto that black mirror window trying to collect terror still cut off from Goyo's gas canister. But now time has run out. 15 seconds. This push has to happen soon. It's going to opt to go right in front of the mirror, but that is going to be visible for Ghostly. They'll collect onto a third before being shut down. But five seconds to go. You're going to have to collect onto this kill on Landis, trying to find him inside the supply. Runs right on in, looks the wrong way. Shots being going to ring out. Both defenders and attackers staying alive. But that means it defaults to the defenders, Corbeck, believe it or not. And that is going to be Columbia taking the round. 
Well, there you have it. Columbia picking one up. Now tied four to four in round number nine. These two teams looking relatively evenly matched here. Uh, Columbia still obviously has the defender advantage. You would expect them to win rounds on the defensive side. We talked about that earlier when it was St. Clair Saints turn. Uh, it looks like the Saints are going to go ahead and call a timeout here as well. And I can't necessarily blame them for doing that uh, to just get an idea of what they're running, right? Like what, the, how they want to run this out because you know you've given up what is that two defensive rounds uh i think at this point in time or two attacking rounds now in a row um yeah that is now two attacks in a row uh oh sorry what was the question i i i found an interesting stat line <laughs> you said no two you're defending fine rounds in a row right I, I thought I yeah, no, I, I got myself confused there st Clair saints have lost two attacking rounds in a row Okay, I, I thought you said. Yes. I thought like you're saying I, I completely mixed up, but uh, you're good. I'll, I'll talk about the stat line in a second. Um, yeah, I, I think yeah. What's your exactly... hit me with your stats? Hit me with well, your it, stats. It, it, what I, do you I, got? You have the scoreboard brought back up whenever we can. Uh, I'll, I'll show it off. But um, that's okay. I know it's okay. I'll, I'll I'll recover this time, Corbeck. It's just uh, I, I'm just gonna be lying in bed tonight, Defenders looking at and saying. Bombs from being but, oh, there, there we go. I don't have to lie in bed. And, oh. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, he's playing with you. It's, that's all that is. Anyway, there you go. Um, I want to talk about Terran Rapid, where they they have done such a proficient job, and they are the top frags for for both these both these teams. Uh, where on the on the attacking side, or sorry, on the other side of Colombia, where you don't have stepping up with all these kills, and yet it is still a tie game. Um, I think it really demonstrates. Um, their proficiency and i want to highlight that although it's two players with those frags they've been assisted by a lot of information that their team was provided that drone game upstairs to get rid of oni playing side master bedroom that was entirely facilitated by most likely one of the support players so kudo dubon salty boy um whoever was joining or corey whoever was droning them in because it does make a difference on a round and uh, I'm really interested to see how the St. Clair Saints are going to turn this around and what adaptations they can come up with in a tactical timeout. Yeah, I agree. I mean, hopefully the tactical timeout has given them the ability to sort of reset, right? Like, I assume they call that because they don't want this to turn into a route, right? Uh, it might be a little bit of a panic call because they, you know, two rounds on the uh, attack when you're going into the hardest, you know, sites to, to attack on this map is not the worst thing in the world, but I can totally understand why a team would want to, uh, you know, take a preventative measure to avert the slide. You're looking now at the setup here. Landis creeping up the stairs, gets caught by the drone almost immediately, and there's the power of drones at work right there because the minute Landis saw that, had to turn tail and run. Whoa, rapid! Making a wide swing across an open wall right there, and I'm not sure that they knew that was open, Binks, if I'm being honest with you. Nub's now stepping up to try and get some shots in right there, but uh, he'll just destroy a drone. Oh, you can't forget about them. Landis coming back from what seemed like the dead, sitting down below, C4 being cooked out. There's a second one for Landis, making their way up. He's going to be hunting for a third as they have the route to push up these Master Vendor teams. There's a third for Landis, Deagle being whipped out. Looking right back down to the final player. And Landis with the 4K down goes Terror. You gotta watch your flank. Oh my goodness, huge play from Columbia. And that's gonna be the third consecutive round. And that's gonna push them all the way to the perfect trio. It is. It is going to push them forward. And honestly, I'm not sure exactly what the, the Saints are going to do here. This has been a couple of very frustrating rounds. They lose the, ter the tertiary bomb site, whatever they discussed in the timeout. It obviously doesn't work because they're back now looking to go at second floor yet again. Uh, it's rough. It's just rough. It feels rough. Like, uh, you want to you wanna try and maybe figure out a more efficient way to attack this, and they're kind of running it back with the same ops they used last time. That said, you know, we talked about the checklist, right, Binks? If they can adapt their attack, uh, learn from what happened last time, I think they can do a lot better right here. This, uh, by the way, Landis on the Solus is just been an absolute killer here and uh it goes to show you why solace is often banned uh as a defender 
Yeah, just an absolute masterclass. There's one, and here's going to be the second drone being taken out, all from that ability. Uh, I, I want to highlight there is a Nomad being brought by St. Clair. You have to have, especially if you have an IGL, uh, talking and communicating with your team of knowing and uh, allowing for the information of where those air jabs are going to be placed. What flanks do we want to have constantly covered? Is this is it the air jab we want to go for, the gridlock for uh, flank denial? Uh, th there's a lot of different options, and I think just making sure you have a clear idea with your team, not just uh, a situational, of where the air jabs are going to be, it can oftentimes make for a much um, more efficient and well thought out push because your entire team knows what they have covered. Looking for intel. There's that Solus at work again. Landis showing the power of the op, keeping a very careful eye out here, but Rapid's not being droned in, so they're not actually going to get that kind of critical piece of intel right there. Exchange of gunfire down low, and they'll fall back, and honestly, the St. Clair Saints sort of slow push here, not doing them a lot of favors. They're getting rings run around them by the roamers right now is what it feels like. They did manage to secure the open on cabinet. I'm not sure if they were able to do that, or if that was actually just left open, which would be an interesting choice. I didn't quite catch it in the prep stage. Serotan still sitting behind this shield, and honestly, any easy entry point here for the Saints is uh, basically blocked at this point in time. And much like their first attack on this top floor, it's hard to see exactly what they're doing to resolve that issue. Yep, we will see that it was consciously left soft. Rapid spraying out, that's all the way from top of main stairs, going to click onto two huge kills, allowing for the ma man advantage to shift the way of the attacking St. Clair Saints. Meanwhile, Blunk is still at the top, all three air jobs have been deployed. Landis going for their signature flank is going to have a very tough task. They do have the ability to surf out for these fights. It's hair taking some damage from Ghostly playing inside of Attic. Still swinging out. Has to be cautious that behind them, that wall could very well be open. Meanwhile, with a minute to go, 60 seconds taken away, you have drones continuing to be set. Corey doing a great job on a support role. But there's Landis. Once again, from the flank, able to find one. Triple kill for Rapid, has to turn their attention right backwards. They're lit up, tiny bit of HP remaining. Spray out, all left up to land. If there's a double kill, they know exactly where they're coming from. Salty Boy on to site. Rapid hunting for yet another kill. Is going to have to push in, they hear there is going to be a potential air drive triple kill for landis even on a sliver of hp salty boy has the advantage has the drones can they find the spray sitting inside of kids dorms staring at a soft wall the crosshairs lined up they don't know it through the wall that sliver of hp will come into play as salty boy collects onto the lonesome solus and your saint Cl saint Clair saints are not out of it yet Uh, well, the Saints doing a, a good job there of recovering. And, uh, you know, this is exactly what we're talking about. They have to stay in it. And they have these two teams remaining pretty much neck and neck here. But, again, kind of a, another really strong bomb site to play here. Liar laundry supply. You're back down to the basement. Uh, and, uh, oh, boy. I mean, uh, can you pull it in <laughs> at the last second again? That's really the question that you're asking yourself. Because that nearly did not go their way, right? Like, like if we're being realistic about it, Landis was on an absolute tear. Very nearly did not go their way. Uh, I mean, it, I hate to say it feels like Columbia is kind of in the driver's seat because the match is a 5-5, but definitely on these attacking rounds, it's felt that way. Uh, that said, it is still 5-5. Uh, it's dead even. Uh, the, the Saints can very much open this up. It's well within their capability to do so. Yeah, unfortunately, the impact damage happened there because I think without it, there might have actually been a fighting chance. I don't know how much Landis had still, uh, how much HP they still had. Uh, last time we saw this basement site, for Vic, I, I, I want to highlight that there there was a lot of contention where it came down to that 1v1 and has actually won and went the way of Columbia off of time. So if the St. Clair Saints can be a little bit more hasty in their approach and continue to clear out those angles, and it a did come down to a great ability to take out that mirror window with a single kill, but it, it wasn't two consecutive kills. It was the matter that you still have Ghostly able to spear around the corner and uh, capture their frag. So it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how the St. Clair Saints adapt and overcome. And most importantly, clear out this Rome game. 
That was on Q. It was on Q. The Rome game for the for Colombia, and honestly for the Saints as well, has been such a pain in the ass for both these teams, and it kind of continues to be a major issue, right? Like neither team is doing a particularly great job of flank watch. You on terror if you're gonna reload, man. Get behind the wall right there. Don't be doing that in the open when you're in the middle of a gunfight. Good info though from Blanc doesn't avail them because Oni swings and gets the kill. There's the trade coming in. Corey Rob picks up two. This is wild, chaotic stuff down here by Blue. Neither of these teams particularly coding themselves the glory in that exchange, but at least they come out of it with a 3-3 and sort of just reset the boards as that uh, reinforcement wall goes up. Yeah, uh, Columbia taking a little bit of the HP advantage, but in the game with a one-shot headshot, that doesn't seem to matter as much. There is still a very big emphasis on getting in through Blue Bunker. We do have the Mute, which should have a jammer stopping. But you have the Thatcher, so Blue is a good option as they force their way in towards Pillar. The remaining three players ghosting first to open up the frags in this second interaction. Down goes Corey, and that's going to leave the remaining players without much in the option of air job. Salty to refrag onto Landis, and it's just a complete frag fest going back and forward. Flunk onto Ghostly. That means Sertan all alone, making their way in through supply, waiting for the spray. Plant is successful, but there's the spray, forcing the one-on-one, -on -one. looking for two, Sertan! Gonna push Columbia onto match point. Yes, you go collect on your frag because you deserve every single bit of that. St. Clair not able to play to have that forced 2v1 and instead getting a little bit too antsy leading to Columbia Defender taking that successful. match point advantage and being able to go and reattempt upstairs to do it. Match point coming down the coming down the pipe here for Columbia. Let's see if they can muster it up and they are going back up to the top floor for it. Which is a which is a good call. I mean, honestly, this is the best bomb site on the map, right? <laughs> like, it, it's big advantage for Columbia. Uh, obviously, the Saints are still in this. Um, the Saints are still in this. They they're not walking away on this one. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely see a pathway forward for them. I think that, though, they're going to have to adapt basically in round to how to deal with the presence of the roamers so they just don't get shredded by them. That said, they did an okay job last time they were up here, Binks. Like, and I'm not going to shortchange them on that. They did an okay job. They did an okay job downstairs just now. It was, a again, very thin margins between these two squads. The St. Clair Saints just need to find a solution where they can shut down let's say Landis early on. Like that's the person I would look for. Oni obviously in the contention as well, but you shut down Landis or Oni very early on. And I think you, without trading, and I think you dramatically change the shape of the attack. Yeah, that's, that's very fair. It's, it's essentially saying, well, you close off the flank, close off uh, that, that creeping feeling that you're being watched and followed. And then, yeah, you can turn your attention towards site. But this this is another time where it was really close, and we've seen this team do a absolutely awesome job of controlling the angles. I'm in interested to see how Ghosty is going to be able to incorporate the Yokai drone into this mess, but even able to spot out multiple drones, get a, get a read for what the team's possibly going to do. And this is all to support Landis, who has really come alive in this in this round and a run out is going to be attempted to catch nomad on their drone looking up for repel not up to find it that's how you open up that's how you set the tone for a match point round oh yeah it's a good way to get started right there blunt just getting caught looking and that is not you know the first or the last time that aggression or that not aggression i guess aggression has been rewarded let's say uh, and you know if you're sitting on the side of the st Clair saints that sucks and salty boy getting killed right there as well but let's be honest they did that same thing they ran out one of their biggest round wins on the defense was why terror running out and getting two kills you've got to be expecting that same medicine being delivered back to you and now you're in a 3v5 on a heavily entrenched defensive position and you got to be asking yourself what the heck do you do to try and turn this one around because I, I don't think the answers are very forthcoming at all here why terror will find a kill on the nubs that's a good place to start but it's uh you know one death out of five you've got to really make it stick if you want to win this Minute 35, Yokai Drone doing its damage. Spring out from Landis. That's her second kill on the round. Looking for the third spring. 
that p90 trying to find it yokai drone stunning all the way outside as terror is forced to retreat back as the remaining two players of Corey and terror a minute 15 and it's sitting in the bus down goes landis finally three to two as terror is slowly clawed it back columbia you can't lose your traction now as it's left to sarah tan and ghostly sitting inside of the site minute to go Corey, terry terror if they talk in this engagement they can make it work slowly moving back cautious of this vertical pole droned out will be ghostly this is not a gunfight you win ghostly go and play your time play for your opponents knowing that they have to come to you time taking away can st Clair scratch and grab at another round 35 seconds left. Corey Robb firing a couple of shots up range. It is that 2v2. I mean, it's a Herculean effort to get into this situation, but you got to actually make it stick. And now you're really getting into a timing issue here as well. No case control either, and that in and of itself is a huge problem. Sarah Tan here on a very narrow poke. Good kill right there, and Corey Robb finds two. Are you kidding me? Columbia struggling to cross the final hurdle. An amazing performance from the Saints to pull that back from a what was certainly looking to be a disaster at a 5v3 and force this into overtime on map number one. I talked about something that's going to keep you up at night, forcing you to stare up at your ceiling and wonder. That is one of those things. When you go and look at those rounds that were so clearly in your control, and I, although you're only trying to support your teammate, it's that if I do this, you do this. I do this, you do this. You're following your friend off a cliff in that scenario. You have to have at least one able-minded person to say, hey, guys, let's slow it down and think about exactly what we're doing and the implications of it. So I, I, I think that was lacking in the previous round, and they, they clearly did pay for it, as uh, we now see over time. But look at the positive. Columbia gets to start on defense. That is great, because we have endless overtime. Do we? Uh, no, I do not believe so. So it is just the you know best of three overtime as per, and Columbia getting a huge advantage as well because they do actually get to start on the defense, yeah, exactly. uh, which really benefits them. I mean, as much as we just saw the Saints pull that one around, it was a great bit of individual play from the you know Terrors and from Corey Rob. Uh, but you cannot expect that every every time, right? And I think considering we are at Legends, right? I think it's a, it's a, a bit of an interesting thing for Saint Clair Saints to really be relying a lot on individual player performance rather than maybe a more systemic approach. But it is very early on in the season, literally the first game. So that's something that may shift here as time goes by. But you really hope for their sake, you know, Corey Rob or Y Terror stay alive here or Rapid, actually, for that matter. They just need a playmaker in place. Yeah, early approach, Salty doing a great job on that drone. You know exactly how you can play blue. You know what you're contending with. And it is going to be the Twitch drone of terror able to eliminate the mirror holding off electrical. That is very, very huge. The second one will be destroyed. And as this push finally ensues, this is great information. Closing off the angle. But can they eliminate the mute? Looking for the down twitch. C4 being cooked out. Landis doing their own little thing. Down goes Rapid. And this is two little micro wars, all resulting in a even one to one count as Blanc takes out the absolute fragging menace that we've come to know as Landis. Nubs still holding off. They've been droned out this entire time. Not enough util has been sent their way. They no longer have to contend with electricals. Salty will finally dispatch of the mute. Terra pushing in with that single sliver of HP as the reinforcement is being put onto that elbow wall. This is great control from your Saints as they have control of Big Tower Stairs. They have control of Pillar. And now they have a very firm control of Man Advantage. Double kill for Terror. Single sliver of HP. They're using that DMR with great proficiency and making wow. three for Terror. Wow. And that is a very much needed timeout for Columbia. That's wild. I mean, a straight, just aggressive face forward push. And Columbia, I just, they weren't able to adapt to it. And hey, I mean, sometimes that's how it is, right? And yeah, it's justifiable that they're going to go ahead and take a time out right there, Binks, because they've, they've got to discuss what went wrong. Uh, and 
it's weird because earlier we saw, I feel like the Saints trying to attempt things like that, you know, very brute force plays. It just didn't work out. I'm not sure what happened in the course of a couple of rounds uh, to enable the, the Saints to pull something like that off, frankly. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself there. And I want I want to go on a highlight that we 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 we've only seen a few rounds where it's back and forth, and that was the last three rounds. Besides that, it's been very single sided of winning the winning three consecutive rounds. We that's a that's a very cool pattern to be looking at. And for Colombia, they have to really prove themselves going on to this attack as they're fighting the uphill battle now. It's now going over to the St. Clair Saints, who have proven to be proficient on defense, securing that 4-2 split. It, it, it could go any way. It comes down and to those, not the individual performance, but the assisted individual performance of how are you going to assist mm. your fragger to go and collect. Yeah, and I think that may be something here that uh, the Saints did really well on that last run. Uh, again, they're doing a good job of, like, brute forcing it, right? Like, they're taking the gunfights that they want. They're leaving terror, why terror the space that they need to sort of thrive. Can they consistently do that? I think that's the <laughs> knife fight. Uh, can they consistently do that, though? That's like the genuine question, right? This is always the issue with teams that are relying on, and I was kind of hinting at this earlier, this is always the issue with teams that rely on maybe like one or two fraggers to really get things done, is you are ultimately relying on, you know, one person not catching a stray and dying immediately. But, I mean, look, here's why Terror setting up for this again, right? He's got a nasty little peak angle. He's going to try and win it all himself with the MPX. And at this point in time, given his scoreline, given what he just did, I can't necessarily blame him for trying. <laughs> it's very high risk, high reward. In the event that this is noticed, then you, you could easily be looking at uh, a round that's extremely favored toward, towards Columbia. But there you have it. The lion making their way into the bus is going to immediately get picked off. That is Sertan. And that's that, that that that's still the spawn peak you're looking for. That's my point being rendered no. Landis, the sort of opposite number here to Y Terror on the Columbia side, the big fragger. They're going to need a huge performance here. Serotan is down. That's going to cut down on their abilities to handle the roamers immensely. All things considered, Salty Boy catching a couple of rounds, but not enough to really put him down for good. Oni now playing awkward sort of feet peak angles. Don't know if they have the time to be playing these games. The swing has to come in fast, and there it is. Oni and Nubs both picking up. And that'll put it back at a 3-3 here. Corey Rob still alive. Salty Boy in Blunk. It's not the worst possible lineup that the St. Clair Saints could have in this valuable situation. And out goes the soft destruction. At the very least, it's causing a lot of havoc and a lot of noise. And is forcing a repositioning here out of Blunk to maybe safer pastures, all things considered. Here comes another drone across the floor. The smoke's starting to come out now. All made for the delay. And this is just making it really uncomfortable for the remaining St. Clair Saints defenders. Is it going to enable one of the Columbia Cougars, though, to pick up a kill? That's the real question. Ghostly sitting down below trying to capitalize on the soft destruction that we've seen and using the skeleton key to great effect. Still looking up. Minute remaining. If they can find a frag here, this could mean the difference. Salty Boy led up to a single sliver of HP. And finally, down they go from below. Great use of those drones. Three to two men advantage now shifting towards the Cougars. Making their way up towards double window. No C4s or explosives remaining in the hands of your Saints. Blunk sitting in the one patch. They are stuck looking down. The moment there's going to be a push that works their way in from a window. This Jaeger is not going to have an option to look up, but there's Corey to rob it away from Nubs. Evening things out. And that's going to be the defending St. Clair Saints with a huge hold on the second floor. Destruction all around to win their opponent's map pick of Oregon.
Well, a dramatic ending right there. The Saints really wrenched that one back around. I mean, coming back, pushing it into overtime. If you had told me that they were going to be able to do that, Binks, at the start of their attacking rounds, I would not genuinely have believed you because they looked a little wrong-footed. Great recovery. And I mean... You honestly can't take that much out of the side of the Columbia Cougars either. They fought the entire time really well right there. It was a very close match, and the fact that it ended in overtime is indicative of that. The fact that the overtime was a little bit lopsided, it didn't go all the way, I think is probably a, a bit of a misrepresentation of how actually close that one is. Yeah, you have a very fair point there, and I, I, I love that we got to see Finally, the, the idea behind the Ram being taken when, when they're not being run out on. Uh, the, that, that soft destruction, hail from below. If you had one more player alive to watch one more cutoff, I think if that was a 4v4 in that scenario, that, that, that's a completely different round, and I could see that going the way of Columbia. But it, it seemed like those three players were not able to capitalize, were not able to find those final hiding spots of the defenders. And I, I, I really... I did come to enjoy that that entire match because it showed off that both these teams are really fighting for it. And most importantly, there's depth to these rosters. Yeah, there definitely is depth. And, uh, you know, it, 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 a lot of it still remains the issue of flankers and just losing casualties early. You're talking about if it had been a four players alive situation, you think it would have gone differently. Uh, I agree with that assessment, right? You've gotten tightened up a little bit on the flanks, but we'll see if they can do that. Our next map coming up soon. It's going to be Cafe. Don't go anywhere here. More collegiate action on the way for NECC Rainbow Six. Good evening, NECC, and welcome back to your Rainbow Six Siege Legends Division. My name is Binks, joined by the wonderful Corbic to my left, I, I guess, or my right, your left, however you want to look at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the, this mirrored universe is so very crazy, and what's so very crazy was the matchup that we just had over on Oregon, and that was between your St. Clair Saints and Columbia College. And uh, something that I really want to highlight as we went into it is the vertical distribution Constructivity. And that's exactly what we're going to see as we move on to our next map of Cafe, which is three levels of destructible floors, Corbeck. And, and I, I think that as soon as we go into these bands, this can shape the entire match on if we are going to see that Columbia, who is very fond of that destruction, will be once again able to rain tear from above or maybe rip away at the floor from below. They're still looking for that knife fight. <laughs> They're still looking for it. I, I, God, I, bless them. Bless them. They want it. Can't one blame of these them. days. One of these days. One of these days. There was a there was agreement, I think, but I, I don't know how serious they are about it. I don't know. I don't know if I'd trust I that. I think there's a likelihood. It. There's likelihood you'll run outside and they'll just shoot you. No, so, I, uh, there, you know, there's an on. No, I, I, these bands can go out the window. There is an honor to a knife fight. If you don't think they're going right, to honor it, you have to believe yourself. If you yourself don't believe, then it won't happen. And Jackal Dog being very simple bands, quite surprised about that. But uh, I, I am a you firm can't ask knife me. Fight. You can't ask me to trust to trust Rainbow Six Siege players not to betray a Come on. All you can do. You can't, you can't. I just, uh, you can't trust them. Oh, interesting. By the way, Soul is oh. getting banned out. Let's talk. Let's talk about bands really yeah. quick. Because Do Dokubi and Jackal, these are not bands that are particularly surprising. We talked about Dokubi a little bit before. Uh, Jackal, obviously, you know, he's a, he's a pain when it comes to dealing with roamers. The irony probably there is that there hasn't been a lot of dealing with roamers, but there won't be uh, from Jackal. Uh, Soul is stepping in to take the place of the Azami right there, and Fenrir going out as well. Interesting that Soul has got banned, considering the impact that the Soul has had in the last game i'm not particularly surprised to see that solace go binks because uh you know this is another map where souls can really thrive a lot of verticality a lot of opportunity to use the sensors right to monitor positioning between these floors yeah and i think we could really see the, by the fact that columbia was consistently able to pick apart the drone game so looking at the roster and uh, guessing roles of uh, what people are going to be on switching over to that legion uh, on Landis could be a, a completely different vibe, or most likely that Valkyrie taking the place of the Solus. Um, th there's actually very many switches that could actually be taking place. Uh, very interchangeable roster with operators, and that, that's kind of something that I like to see from Columbia, as it shows depth in a particular setup, as they'll be starting on the defensive end. They, they did a great job starting off last time with their defense, but very much stalled things out. 
And St. Clair was able to win three consecutive or two consecutive attacking rounds and one defending round to win that last match in overtime. L lots, lots to play out here. Ten seconds to go. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely a lot to, uh, to really, I think, consider as well on this map, just of how uh, these teams are going to play this, right? What we've learned from our last one. Obviously, the Saints in particular seem to favor really making moves that enable uh, their fraggers, their consistent killers to get into position. Columbia, too, kind of falls into that category. We haven't seen a, I would say, a particularly systemic approach from either of these teams, but it does seem to kind of work to their favor, right? They seem to thrive in chaos. Uh, so I can't necessarily blame them for that. A good little bit of site prep, by the way, a little bit of micromanagement from Oni up there on the top floor to take out that glass and uh, make it so it's a lot more obvious when people are on those windows. At least I think that was his plan uh, as we get settled in for the attacking round. Very curious to see how the Saints approach this one. Lots of options for them. I think, especially with this type of site, you could go for some Verkata from below, but that is more Columbia's type of thing. I love this Azami setup upstairs, and it, it, it's really, really cool. And we, we can go ahead and turn around to see how this setup works, and perhaps even have a, a, a really clear view of Terra getting the opening kill onto Nubs. That was all from a Claymore that was out on the exterior bakery roof outside train museum. So great early pick for the attackers, but one that necessarily shouldn't happen. So that's gonna leave Nubs relegated to watching cameras for the rest of the round, or in this case, Spec Team Landis, who's been a very, very fun player to watch. Certainly has been an interesting player to watch, and this aggression coming out of the St. Clair Saints is probably what we would expect based on their last round approaches. Why Terror, though, is down. It's a good sightline there from Ghostly, really playing the pixel, but not able to find it. Gets droned out, and I think that's got to be the end of the run. Yeah, we'll fall back to sort of the next defensive position right there, trying to swing anyone who will come through the hallway as Landis picks up a kill. And that's a critical one there to keep it at a 3-3, three to three, sort of keep this even. Still being held up by the pixel shield as Landis finds one more, and it's Landis who's just picking them off one by one as they get stoppered up by the defenses, and then suddenly it's over. Landis and Ghostly both combining right there to shut down or shut down the Saints attack. That, that was fun to watch. It was Columbia really utilizing the angles that they set up early on. Landis, once again, being the household name at this point uh, in this matchup, as they've been able to find themselves in these key playmaking spots or positions. Uh, to, to find those key headshots. And I want to talk about just their their own perspective of, of how they're able to line these up. I, I don't know what the comms are like over at Columbia, uh, but I imagine, I and from my own personal bond. experience, it's having that extra voice in here of knowing when to push uh, and, and having the information of where your opponent is. And that's going to be very pivotal as we go onto a map, uh, on a, to a site just like Kitchen. If you have the information of where your opponent's coming from, if you're on that roam, or even if you're sitting on site, that key time of when to swing is the make or break of kitchen and bakery. Yeah, very true. Uh, the the make, and, make or break is a good way to kind of break. <laughs> That's a terrible follow-up, but yeah, a good way to break down that at a particular site. Five Looking to the way that they're playing this, right? Landis is the expansion. That's a, a Jaeger on the roam. He's not the most common roamer in this day and age. He certainly has that capability. The, the big pivot point here on the defensive side is Ghostly on the uh, Azami, right? We talked about this a little bit at the start of the last map. Azami is individually an incredibly strong operator, and you can actually see that in action right here, sort of re-fortifying the entrance area of Bakery. I don't know if the Kiva Barricades uh, should have been held back maybe for uh, like deployment later on. Usually one of the best parts here is that uh, you can kind of use a zombie to adapt as you go on. But look at this, a blitz rush coming right down. That's going to result in a zombie getting shot in the back. Why Terror there on the lead? And here comes the rush straight down the gut. 
Yeah, picking up right through Bakery. Four players ready to go win. They're even going to be able to deny that Thermite Charge. That allows for a quick push in. C4 capability on the side is only going to be the Mutus Heriton. Terror able to collect trades back and forth, resulting in a 2-3, to three, favoring your attackers. Meanwhile, Rapid looking to make their way in. They have the man advantage. They have the players available. Make their way down main stairs is Nubs. Droned out, forced out to do quarter. That's a scary place to turn your back. Spraying, waiting for the frost to make their way in. Destructive capabilities. Spraying right on through. No plant attempted. 143 C4. Still in the hands of Sarah Tan. Still utilizable. They have the blitz. No smokes. Flashes from the thermite if needed. It's going to be collected. Nubs with the quick kill. Rushed by the blitz. Oh, knifed over the shield. Great double kill from Nubs. Turning this round completely on his head. Blunk left all alone. Stuck inside of kitchen cooking. Looking all the way down towards freezer. Hoping to find that one on one engagement. Double window. Single door. Left, right. 50 50 chance. Could it be the sound that's going to give it away? Could it be the frost of nubs waiting down, down, down double door? Pushing in. Is able to isolate the 1v1 into freezer. Can they find it unexpected? Down goes Zaratan. Looking now still the two 50 50 option. Is it going to be from freezer? Ball from freezer from nubs. Sprays in, gives away location. Repeat, rinse, whatever you need to do. That's nubs from double door to the single window or single door. It's the chaos that ensues in a 1v1. Looking for a ball oh. as they rotate out of the sight. Nubs with a 3k on the round to keep Columbia alive in this 1v1. As it looks, we have another close match on our hands, Corbick. Unfortunate there, Lunk, or Blunk, I think, just didn't genuinely know where his opponent was. That's why he got caught looking in such an egregious manner. Uh, I mean, that will happen. I Genuinely, that will happen. Uh, just bad luck, honestly. Uh, you know, GG's go next. Um, uh, you know, again, a pretty violent start there for the Saints, right, to end in that 1v1 situation. And obviously, if you're coming in on a hard rush, you know, led by a blitz, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect it to get to the point where it's like a, I don't know what the right word is, a bloodbath, let's say. Uh, but, but you would prefer yeah, to convert okay. right there if you can do it. Yeah, that's... A fair estimate and going over to a tertiary bomb site rather than opting to go for uh, dining and train I, I i do prefer this site as well and the fact that mira is now able to escape so many ban phases this opens me back up to my comfortable little siege um I, 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 I love this mirror setup, and I'm, I'm going to go and diagnose it a little bit more. So the reason that you're seeing all these holes being opened up is holding all the way from Five long. Left you're able to set up just a tiny bit of utility while clearing and holding all Attackers through Cigar. And um, the, I'm not the biggest fan of that mirror placement, but the, it, it's the risk reward. And the reason why you see it placed to the right, you normally say, oh, look to the left, is because you can actually see it from the window that is castle barricaded off. So a lot of emphasis onto this extension, and that is going to be assisted by the fact that Ghostly was able to take out Rapid. Um, they, I, I, a great pick to see. Uh, not much more to say. It was uh, your, your common little spawn peak, Ayana. Horrible operator to lose early on. Recoverable, though, and I want to emphasize that. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, genuinely, yeah, recoverable, and that's the uh, that's the important thing to know, right? It's definitely not over. Yana, you don't want to lose her early on, like you said, a, a terrible op to lose in the early game, but not a uh, round ender by any stretch of the word. It does hurt to not have those frags and not have the information gathering ability, uh, but you are certainly not done and dusted. And Nubs here now getting very aggressive on that skylight doesn't I think even realize that they just got droned right there, and if they did, they're holding that angle for an awfully long time before sort of beating a retreat and trying a reset. I mean, the, the fact of the matter here is, Vinks, you cannot push that particular angle until you have a way to deal with that mirror window, which requires you to play from the cocktail side, but I don't think any of the members of the Saints are really looking over on that cocktail side. A true push slowly ringing out from the cigar side instead. And looking for a quick initial push up. Xterrant 
scared for an eight push to come from below and there's almost five players a minute 15 my general rule is that you want to have this completely cleared extremely early on uh, and that will that will very much not be the case spraying towards the mira flung also down and out for the count next guy was pellets being set onto your mira holding down freezer you've held for an entire two minutes as a player of columbia this is the time when you leave one player up to fight hold for their life before making their way down but it looks like columbia will opt to do otherwise they're going to go a little bit more on the offensive making their way in through bar down goes Landis to Salty Boy, bringing this man advantage a little bit more in an obtainable grasp. 35 Loading seconds back. to go now. Kills ringing out in both wise terrors. Good, good stay on the positive side of things. Both at a single sliver of HP. Terror, Salty Boy, need to talk, communicate. Down goes Terror from the deadly hands of Ghostly at the top of White Stairs. They're down but not out. Revive will be successful. They have to reattempt with 15 go. seconds to go. But you have the C4. You have all this utility blocking your path. And when you can't clear the second floor and don't change your route, this is the unfortunate conclusion that you will meet. A little bit of a reconciliation kill for Salty Boys. They'll have to sit, wait out upstairs as the round comes to its natural conclusion. Unfortunate place to end it, if we're being honest, but, uh, you know, it, it happens, right? That's just the way that it goes. Uh, the St. Clair Saints are having a bit of a hard time on attack. I feel like they're struggling to navigate exactly how they want to do this, and it, it maybe is echoing back to a little bit of what we were discussing on the previous map, where they sort of are not necessarily going down their checklist. It does feel like it's a bit haphazard at times. Uh, you know, they're playing off the cocktail windows or what have you. I mean... The good news is these are things that are very easy for them to improve on. The bad news is, you know, you don't have a lot of in time to improve upon them in mid map, right? Like you can't just suddenly start getting better at the attacks. Now, Defenders looking to the other side, Columbia is just really, you know, they're playing, they're, they're playing siege, right? Vinks? like they're playing yeah. siege. They're holding their angles. They're holding their defensive positions. Their setups have been, if Bomb not, you know, innovative, at least solid and understandable. Uh, and they're they're letting the Saints kind of filter into them, and it's paying off in dividends. Yeah, I want to highlight actually the confirmation bias that I've actually think we've been able to see from Columbia in their actual setups for defense, where uh, you're looking for. Oh well, I think that if we attack this, this is how we would go about things. And Columbia's very vertically orientated, and you, you can really you can really emphasize that the, the fact that these teams have had to go and adjust to each other. Attacker Columbia loves the vertical play. The if you go and look at the way that they're setting up their sites, that verticality is being emphasized and showing how you are going to prevent it. You have this zombie uh, setup, which is reinforcing the hatch, playing and aware of the vertical that can happen down below. Meanwhile, that site that we had previously into reading as well as dining you had a lot of emphasis upstairs because that is the part that they feel they will get shot at the most and sense a confirmation bias that your team would have a little bit more trouble going against it yeah, I, I think that's, you know, a very fair assessment, all things considered. Oni here with a huge opportunity for the Nitro. Too delayed, though. Didn't quite pick up on it. He might actually get droned out here if he's not careful. He gets caught standing there with the drone. Blunk's got a good idea that he's there. You're not going to catch anybody now. That's just going to force him to fall back into the humidor and try and hold out here in Cigar. You by the looks of it, might have just lost an Echo as well. I'm not sure exactly what happened right there, but I thought that I saw it get destroyed. They do catch one drone on the mute, and that's a good effort right there to at least slow down the attack. And the Saints are getting a little stifled here, Banks. They put a lot of money onto that hatch, and it's not paid off at all. Yeah, they, the, getting that yokai is great, but at the end of the day, Dubs is still alive and well with a gun, and they haven't made their way down. They are extremely scared of this uh, entire setup gun towards this. What you need to have happen, air jab per se, second floor, get on those windows, open them up, get some verticality. It, it, you, you have to play to your strengths, and in this sense, that's going to be making Columbia feel pressured from all around them. Not a single window has been broken, and I feel like that's such a simple thing to be missing. On the roam, Salty Boy will be able to free things up. Down goes the fragging mastermind in the form of Landis, looking down towards 
Cigar Lounge playing up by the piano will be ghostly. Meanwhile, his comrade of Nub will now be down and out for the count. Three to five. Columbia has come back from worse. Can they do it again? These long angles are not favoring them. St. Clair is able to continuously push up from spots that Columbia would very much prefer. They did not have the pressure. White stairs, bring it out, not up to watch the right angle. Ghostly to collect one. Down goes Salty Boy, that's your hard breach. Running right on around. Two players caught up inside Cigar Lines. The remaining one of Castle Sear 10 stuck on a single. I said sliver a few times, but this is a breadstick of HP. Rapid, able to collect onto Oni. Down to a 2v4. Great clear, great. Repick up by your state player at Saints. They've been able to maneuver. You do have the repel on the window. The ten minute seconds. wise adaptation, but 10 seconds to go. If they aren't able to find this remaining player, if we do have Sarah 10 able to collect and deny that plant, we could see a different outcome. However, Corbett, we will not, as it will be the St. Clair Saints not losing a second player in that round, taking a four player alive. Uh, clear. I, I, I don't know much to say about it as they just work together <laughs> mm, yeah no i agree uh, it's a good effort there from the saints honestly to kind of reverse the way things have been going because i feel like they got towards that mid round and it did genuinely look like uh look like they were struggling right like the drop in on the hatch it looked like they were just tight 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 and those kind of pushes generally tend to go poorly but that said the saints did a great job they jumped right back into it i mean they, they adapted very well on that round and that's something that they got to give themselves credit Defenders for and something that they've been bombs. consistently I mean, proving to be attack. quite good at i think across all of these maps i mean we saw them launch an amazing comeback on oregon which is a defender sided map i don't necessarily uh don't necessarily count them out on doing that here on cafe again another very heavily defender sided map all things considered Yeah, I think it's very much a defender side of map, but I think the expected outcome for a map like this is very much like Oregon. You're looking for that four to two split, and that gives you a good option to have your defensive half go the exact yeah, same way. And when you, when you get up to that that three or four, hey, maybe maybe we could push. Maybe we can go and get three rounds, cut this one out nice and early. But if there's one thing I've learned about the St. Clair Saints, they're a team that can constantly turn things around and really turn things on. They're looking for a second round and potentially a third. If they go and reattempt and have a very proficient clear at the second level, I, I think they can't do that because in that later part of the round, they immediately realize, hey, this is what we're doing wrong. And giving them a chance to go and reattempt that seems dangerous in itself. Yeah, I, I think that's, uh, you know, that's a very valid, valid assessment of that. Uh, it, it, it is dangerous, right? And I think if you're on Columbia right now, you're looking back at that pass round and you're saying, how do we do that better? And look at that. That's exactly what I was going to say. One of the first things you want to do is you want to ensure that you get the first round kill. Not the absolute most impactful kill you could have gotten right there, right? Like Blunk is a, a, a Thatcher. His utility overall, considering the lineup that you guys are running, it, it's not absolutely critical um but still being down four to five on the attack really not good right like not the place that you want to start here we'll see what rapid can do off of this repel wow. the jump out whoa, looks whoa, the wrong whoa. way whoa. and rapid catches nubs i can't fault nubs for going for it i mean i can't fault him for going for it on that particular operator because yeah. that's someone who has value the longer the round goes uh but i can't fault him for the general principle right there yeah, Terra able to get a second frag before they are knocked right on down. Ghostly able to collect on Corey. Terra 10 onto Rapid. Landis onto Terror. It's all coming apart. All left up the Salty having to find three. Sprang finds one. Flex towards the second. Not able to collect Ghostly with two on the round. Next, that's the fourth round for your Cougars. Well. The Cougars winning that one out. And again, I mean, both of these teams have drawn uh, some real capacity for swinging back into this because suddenly the Cougars were down. You know, Nubs jumped out the window. It didn't look good. And then suddenly the Cougars are on top right there. And the St. Clair Saints are the ones who are suffering. And it's been a very swingy match in that regard. But it does seem like the Cougars are starting to run away with this one just a little bit. I mean, you look at that score line. You look at the number of rounds that the Cougars have put together on the defense. 4-2. 
you know, all that being said, four two banks would not be unexpected on the defensive side. Not unexpected at all. That would probably be about what I would imagine a, a decent team would put up. Again, it's very similar to Oregon in that regard. Defensively decided map, walk away with a four two. Everybody's happy. I, I, I got a fair point. Hey, you always want to strive for more. Should Columbia actually acquire this round? Uh, I, I see them realistically taking this map in a, a, a rather quick fashion in the St. Clair has been hiding a, a dark hole on, on defense that, that we are, are yet to Five see. But we have the same blitz coming out, Nomad. It, it was an interesting push to say so the first time, and I think the blitz getting knifed over the shield was unfortunate, and it did have more potential. But I don't know about consistently taking that blitz because the shock factor is no longer there. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, uh, I, they should be expecting this. It doesn't necessarily mean that they will, but they should. Bit of a same setup, right? You've got Ghostly here on the bakery extension. You know, this time, I think, when you see uh, that uh, Blitz coming at you, if you're in a zombie, you're going to know exactly what you need to do. Rat might try and come at this from a different direction, but he's actually stopped by a Kiba Barricade on the doorway. Well, that's slowing everything down. That said, Blunk still gets the kill on the Ghostly, who is not able to escape the bakery. Nub stepping up now and piking one the other way, only getting into the action and catching Rapid. Thus ends the Blitz, and thus ends the Blitz in terms of the rush as well, because they're not going to be doing anything more on that front in this round. Over to Nubs, down they go as the hands of terror looking for a second one. They'll be able to collect onto it. Two, three, now favoring your St. Clair Saints. Swinging around, trying to find that opening into sight. The holes already been made open for them. They've opened this left side in the past, but they haven't cleared out Kochik. They haven't cleared out much of sight. And that means that they have to try and drone. New jammers are still in play. Minute 32, Thatcher EMP is going to be utilized to get those drones onto the site. Find Landis, by Saratan. These are two players that you know have been absolutely lethal when they need to be. There's no sense of comfort in this round for St. Clair. This man advantage does not mean much. Down goes Terror at the hands of Saratan, playing all the way back behind Kitchen Counter. Forcibly trying to rotate and crawl out of the site, it will not be possible. They have a good expectation that they down the player. Spraying is able to collect under a second one. Terror still down. Blanc, last player alive. Spraying in towards sight. He's going to go for the plan to revive, but there's the crossfire we are talking about. That's a fifth round for your Cougars. They finish that half rather comfy and cozy. Yeah, 5-1. It's a great scoreline. It's pretty much the best you can possibly expect, unless you're just absolutely head over tails over your opponents, and I... You know, don't think we can say that they're head over tails on the Saints, considering that they lost map number one. Little bit of a reset required here by the Saints as they switch over to the defense, you know. And I, I think that just given the nature of the map, the Saints taking over on the defensive side is going to do nothing but favor them, right? Like you would expect. Uh, their defensive lineup here coming in on the top floor, nothing of real shock or horror there, right? Like pretty standard. Defenders Interesting that they're bomb. going to go ahead and by bring, uh, you know, the double whammy, you got the Lamai and the Jaeger. So basically, the hardest projectiles now you can possibly must here uh between the two of them yeah. it's also interesting to me binks by the way that both of these teams continue to bring mutes that's not necessarily surprising uh but it does really show you the impact of that soulless ban because that's kind of the spot that a soulless would take in terms of being able to wipe out drum yeah you can also go and look at the the different chains that you now get in the sense that you have the c4 in the hands of the, uh, the type of destructive capabilities they take with that mossberg shotgun five seconds left making sure to note that ghostly is over on that emerald and we could see a, a really explosive push capitao lion nomad ying this is the type of blitz push i know we don't have the blitz on the board but this is the type of blitz push in the sense that you're going to be rushing into sight taking control of something and not giving it back if they are properly able to capitalize that get that onto the roof that could easily be the case so only joining out from up above this is the support world that we've come to love from 
Columbia and able to spot up these players. If they do have to go for this rush, I'll be a little bit blown away. But you, you want to see that everyone is in position. You want to have all these players working in unison. And I'd love to see Ghosty as they spring right on in. Are able to win out their first initial gunfight. Yin and Candela are ringing all the way out. Nomad into sight. Can you go into the plant? This is the blitz we talked about. Take control and don't give it back. Corey Terror able to take it right back as they have not secured their exits. There's going to be nubs collecting under the case. There was denial from down below. Great communication from your saints. Down goes nubs as it's been a complete turnaround. They forgot to mention that this is St. Clair's site. This is the one that they don't want to give up. And they've really proven it. Oni left with zero utility remaining. One drone in their pocket, but it's gonna be a nice little tap from Terror to remind you that they are there with a good little rotate to get the Saints back on the board and just show that they are ready to fight. <laughs> they certainly are ready to fright, uh, fight, no doubt about it. They're also probably ready to fright, if we're being honest. But I mean, uh, it, it, good for them. on the board. You have Terror. You're going to be Terror's on the board. There's going to be a bit of a Terror's fight. on the board. Yeah, 100%. Uh, they've done a good job right there of, of kind of wrenching this one back in and, you know, credit where credit is due on, uh, you know, not hesitating to take advantage of that first defensive round going down to kitchen service, kitchen cooking. Now, this is going to be interesting to see because this is a site where Ram, who has made one or two appearances Attackers with kind of a limited value. This is one of those sites where Ram could have a lot of value, right? The yeah. issue, though is the same issue you would face, say, if you had a sledge on this particular site, which is you actually have to guarantee control of that mid floor before you can really start with the soft destruction. Thank you very much, Observer. That's exactly what I'm talking about. This is where Ram is going to make or break this attack because you can rip up enough panels on that floor banks, you basically control the entirety of the A site if you're playing it right. Same could be said of the dining room as well. It's a little bit more difficult to execute here just because the bomb site slightly shifts, but you're going to have to take control of that. Given that both of these teams have really struggled with roamers, I don't know how effectively uh, that's going to work out for Columbia. And hopefully, hopefully, and I assume that you, St. Clair Saints, know how important this is. And we'll have White Terror, who continues to just be an absolute, you know, terror for their team up there on that top floor. 12 and 5 is a ridiculous scoreline. That, that, that's for, for a 5 to 2. They, they've really been keeping it close. And. Just looking at off statistics alone, that that's a, a player that you you should be terrorizing going against. So lots of destruction already ringing out. You can see the floorboards falling as the RAM device was configured onto the window. That's going to be Sophia concussive mines being sent out, having to spray. You have your crosshair looking towards them, not able to win that gunfight out. Spraying in that is going to be from Coach Check. That's rapid. Great little pick. Able to utilize it. Can they go and use the roam? Good choice to go and try to watch for it, but it's a complete cleanup. Down goes Chili, but Terra was finally taken down. 13 and 6 now. Still making an impact on the round. And that's something I want to highlight, Corbeck. You're you're going, you're rotating <laughs> around. Uh, I, I am a, a bit of a loss for words because Columbia was shut down before they even got started. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Yeah, it does kind of feel that way. You know, Serotain is going to have their work cut out for them if they want to win this one. I don't think that's going to happen. Perhaps a little bit too much of a direct approach from Columbia, really. I, You know, I, they never really got Ram in a great position to do what they needed to do. They never quite executed in a, in a sort of staged performance like you would kind of hope they would. This is, again, the thing that we've been talking about all night, but... They can't kick themselves too hard for it. I mean, it's a, it's a difficult site to attack at the best of times. Serotan here spraying some fire over towards the kitchen, not finding anything. Trying, I think, to just figure out where that gunfire is coming from, if we're being honest. And gets caught by Corey Rob as they sort of swing across the open entry. Trapped, by the way, that entire way. So a rough opening of round number eight right there for the members of Columbia Cougars. Yeah, really... Uh... I like that the St. Clair Saints have a very deep knowledge, but this is the pivotal round that we need to see. The St. Clair Saints can afford to lose a tertiary bomb site once, but you're looking to win it 
e easily once or twice where you, you don't want to be dropping those easy bomb sites you're you're expected to win five to of the six rounds one round for error and if you don't need it for error then hey you can go and win it outright but the verticality that i talked about is the strong suit of Colombia. Their ability to clear the roam has oftentimes been the strong suit that they did not nearly focus enough on. They didn't focus on that verticality in the early round and have that cookie cut setup of going top to bottom in, in a clear cut fashion. And that's, well, that's where I took issue with Colombia's approach on the last round. There's a big emphasis from St. Clair to hold up above, but is there a calculated choke time of, oh right, if you're there at one, uh, one minute, this is when you roll back, uh, rotate back. How do the Saints intend to maintain control for the longest amount of time without sacrificing too much of their own utility and too much of their own manpower? Aye, right, that is the question, is it not? How do you uh, how do you do that? I, I think if there was an uh, answer for that, we, we we would have to speculate. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have to speculate exactly. You you would just know. Um, and, and you know, again, this is a very good question, uh, and it's the kind of thing that can sometimes be a bit difficult to puzzle out on the fly. Not to say that it's impossible, but it certainly can be difficult. Uh, in truth. You know, one of the things that they can do, and, and I'm, I continue to harp on it, you just got to try and get the first kill. It does feel like the first kills in these rounds have been very impactful in the main. Every once in a while, there have been rounds where that has not been the case. But usually, if a team loses a body first, they get a little bit stifled, right? Like, that's just how it seems to be going. In this particular circumstance, you're going to want to take out one of these top to four defenders early on. Because if you can take out one of the top floor defenders early on, I think you can do some great work to break this top floor hold. Once you break the top floor hold, you bring the ram in, you get to work on destroying the floor. And then hopefully uh, you can kind of put enough pressure where you can secure yourself an easy plant and reading, which is usually what teams are looking for. On the repel. Monk missing some shots will lead to their inevitable downfall inside of Laundry as the push from Columbia has not come from above, but instead a horizontal push from below, fought right back from Terror and Rapid. Rapid on an absolute tangent will go for two. Case down, stuck inside a reading. Terror with three. Down goes Ghostly. Only the last remaining player on the Canadian operator of Buck. Looking towards a main corridor, White Stairs has two players to find. Terra lit up just above 40 HP. Do they have the ability to rotate? Do they have any information on their opponent? Do they have enough time? All questions that will be answered very soon. Spotted out on the default camera will be dispatched up rather quickly. Turning towards site. They do not have any utility available to drain the Azami Barricade. They'll have to go and eat it up. Shots onto the feet from up above. Spraying. That is a great idea from both Terra and Salty to work together. That was the use of the super shorty up above. Salty doing a great job holding it. That's a 4K for Terror. Wow, just an absolute utilization of the angles. The sound call that you need and a flick for a nice headshot to keep St. Clair fighting in this match. Oh, this has to be frustrating for Columbia. It just has to be frustrating. It, it's too much of a shade of what they saw in Oregon last match. Um, you know, they, they step out, or they do so well early on, and now suddenly they're in a position where they're just, they're, they're on the back foot. They cannot get these attack rounds going, and it's not for lack of trying either, right? Like, they've definitely, uh, they definitely have had some good, good ideas in their executions. It's just, or I should say in their general plans, the executions are what have been lacking. And yeah, got to be hard. Got to be hard. Uh, all you can really do is sort of, you know, circle the wagons, try and figure out maybe a new way to approach this. And I think they're showing us that here, or they were for a second. They had coming out, it looked like the Flores. That might switch over to a Nook. I mean, both of those operators are going to change the pacing here a little bit, right? They're going to change the assault pattern, Banks, because you get like a Flores in here as well. That would really help with some of the soft util destruction. But you do have Corey Rob on that mute, who I think is probably why you're seeing the swap over to the Nook instead. And Nook, you know, not what she used to be after some real recent nerfs in terms of just being like an absolutely ridiculous fragger, but still a very strong operator in the right hand. Attacker's objective is to defuse a bomb. And have 
we... Binks, are you still there? Oh, I'm still here. Oh, I, I'm having... oh, okay, good. Had a little bit of troubles with my microphone. Th thank you. I ah, it's think, a classic thank problem. Thank you for telling me instead of just uh, <laughs> letting me just keep going on and on. But as I was saying, oh man, I really liked my point. But, um, so we had uh, the Nook is a, a really good choice to be taking in this scenario, primarily because of all the emphasis that uh, St. Clair has been putting onto the information game. You had someone constantly watching the default cameras, all the bulletproof, uh, as you really should be in this scenario. However, uh, I, I I don't know that the sound per se will, will be as important as we would like to think. Rapid with a opening kill onto Ghostly. That's your information gain as well as your top frag of Ghostly now going down. Not to fret, Columbia has some other people who could come up big, but Rapid, that's their second one on the round. Eight and six now. They, they have proven a lot of times in the past, although they're not on that main fragging role as of currently, they, they have rotated around on a third floor site trying to find it but do they know that landis is lurking not trying to make too much noise on this main quarter this is a really big choke point they hear each other looking for three down they go good job rapid that's a heads up play looking for oni now this is another 1v1 they find it that's the quad kill for rapid looking for the ace can they find it you know blunk went down a little while ago tan out on train window Going to rotate all the way down to the first floor. This could be a potential tactical timeout with the remaining minute. That's exactly what it will be. Ace denied. I'm giving it as an honorary ace to wrap it because we know that when you're that hot, you're not cooling off. Um, that that was just one after the other, Corbic, of, oh, let's 1v1. Again and again, not closing off, not communicating. And when you have a breakdown of communication that severe, that's when you really start to have a lot of trouble. That's where you have players getting mad at each other for the timing. Calm down. You need to have a calm, soothing voice or a very authoritarian, they, or someone that can speak, authoritative mm -hmm. voice, um, to tell you exactly how to roll your shoulders and time things out. We did not see, we're not seeing that on Cafe, where we saw it on Oregon. No, and with 20 seconds left on the round in a 1v4, I mean, the Columbia Cougars, what are they going to do here, right? Like, Saratan again, the last person left standing. Saratan is all the way back in spawn. And I'm assuming they're kind of, you know, putting it in the corner with the flag here to basically allow their team to have a bit of discussion terror. Uh, his eyes are a little too big for his stomach right there. He steps out, he gets caught by the claymore. Don't even, don't blame him for trying, though. Uh, but, yeah, I, I assume that that's basically like an unofficial timeout right there from Columbia, right? As we get set to 5-5, right now because the Columbia attack is just really struggling to get off the ground here against the Saints defense. And I did say, you know, Binks back at the at the top of this when we switched sides, and side swap really favors Saints. Yeah. They showed it, uh, you know, they showed a good defensive half on Oregon, and they're showing a great defensive half here. Yeah, that's four consecutive rounds, and I think it's very worth mentioning. Uh, I don't know where these teams are located. I haven't learned enough about them as it is very early in the season, but um, it's currently 1119 Eastern Standard Time. While well, these are all academic students having a full day, um, they, they, it starts to get really late. It, it starts to really wear on your mental. That communication becomes a lot more difficult when you're sitting, staring at a screen, going through the motions. Active brain power is the hardest part of Rainbow Six, and that mental endurance in a best of three is something that uh, I can only commend players because I understand um, uh, how, how tough it is. And, and maybe, who knows, there, there could be someone like the Observer who's stuck in uh, the UK and has been up for 22 hours. So thank you to the unnamed gamer. Defenders That's their name. That's not just me choosing not to name them. <laughs> yeah, it, you, you're correct. I mean, at this point in time for Columbia, right, you've got to arrest the momentum here. You need to get this. You need to at least try and get this into a situation where you can get it to overtime. You have to stop the run. Um, because I think if the St. Clair Saints win this round, this probably going to be the end of the road, right? Like, I know there'll be a round where the, the Columbia has a chance to get back on top. But just the way that the momentum is swinging for the Saints, I, I don't know that uh, they'll be able to stop it when it's in such a critical point in time, right? Like the the uh, the pressure is going to be too much. 
looking at the way that Columbia is coming at this, uh, I think that this is a relatively straightforward way of going about it. The choice that I think I'm questioning the most would be Ghostly Binks, like coming in on the Aruni. I'm not sure that she's the correct call, honestly, uh, on this basement site. You know, she's an operator that thrives on, you know, speed uh, and being a little bit unsupported. Fortunately, she will have some droning from Oni. If they can catch Terror looking, right? Like, if they can catch him out looking on the top floor, they may be in a good position to convert this round. But Terror, you know, picks up on it almost immediately and will not be caught. I'm reloading. Yeah, that, that's that's the type of difference that can that can make or break a round. This is uh, uh, where you need to see Columbia really step it up, or we might be, not be seeing that final map of Chalet. No, he's going to be looking around on the drone. I, I do like that you have a buck, someone who has that vertical pressure to be notifying of terror. But they're still stuck on that red stairs, but there's no one down below to completely follow it up. You rotate back down, you're still safe going back to kitchen. And I, I think that's something that Claire, St. Clair Saints have done a great job. There's Blunk. Down goes Landis, your top frag from Oregon. No longer able to make a impact on this round. And once again, I don't know why that Ayana is so cursed for this poor roster, but all that information gathering down with them. Nubs doing a good job of getting the vertical play in. Corbeck, I need to see a little bit more hastefulness. You have no control of the first level, and verticality alone will not win this bomb site. Reaching! Well, they've got a good position to work with, but they need to get kills. They can't get killed back. Rapid finds Nubs there looking for the floor. The worst thing that could have happened once you actually get the soft destruction in position. Oh, and this is just going to make it really hard here for Ghostly, who pings that proximity alarm. Everybody and their mother knows that he's coming in right there. Great shot coming down. Sarotan is dead. Suddenly, the only member here of Columbia left alive is Oni and Terror. Who else? But Terror comes circling back in and picks him off. And really, a great collapse on the defensive side there by the Saints to just surround the remaining defenders and pick them off. And great reverse vertical play as well from the Saints right there. Big props, big props. Yeah, I, I really like that. For Columbia, what, what I need to see a little bit more of is the pressure assisting the vertical. You can have people sending their drones up in that early drone phase. If you know that you're going to be droning one of your players upstairs, then you can go. There's great external drone holes, like outside laundry, that you can go or, or trying to choose a, a good spawn location and getting your drones to where you need them to, using the prep phase for that. And then that way you don't have to toss a drone. You don't have to do anything. You drone your players in. The moment they're in, that second drone, Attackers it's two layers of droning. You drone in the players upstairs. You're immediately forcing pressure onto that first floor. So the moment they think they can rotate back down, they can't. The moment they think they can even extend back out, they can't. You have to close them off at every single location. A failure to do that, unfortunately, Corbeck, just means that your defending counterparts are going to utilize it. Uh, I think Columbia did a great job closing things off on... Uh, Oregon, but the moment you switch to a map like Cafe, it needs to be a lot more solidified. It needs to be someone that's, um, quite frankly, a lot more boring to have to just constantly stare down a line of sight. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I feel I feel some significant sympathy here for the side of yes. Columbia because this has just got to be ridiculously frustrating. I mean, you just cannot get a defensive round or an offensive round win. But I mean, you know, the Saints are earning it. It's not like they're walking this in or, or not, you know, lucking out or anything. They're playing very solid, very adaptable defenses. The reads are good. The calls from whoever's IGLing for them are good. Um, and it, it's just Columbia not being able to find a way to, to counteract that. And that's just the way Siege is sometimes. As, as kind of basic as it sounds to say that, it's just genuinely how the game goes. Sometimes you just get beat. Terror here stepping up. Terror's got to actually be very careful. This is not a safe position whatsoever. An opportunity to catch Terror looking right there. Unfortunately, passes by the wayside. Can he turn that around and get a kill off of it? That would be the ultimate pain here. Terror forced to retreat yet again. Still, I mean, they're doing a good job of forcing these roamers back, Binks, but they are not killing them when they are vulnerable. And if they continue to do that, they can pressure from down below. We know that Columbia is great at uh, 
uh, allowing for vertical pressure from down going up but you still have Blanc on the roam possibly not droned out drones being set up and sent out all along that third floor great use of that floor is to open things up that's going to give you a route towards freezer buck looking down able to catch the mute down goes Blanc. great communication from columbia this is the light that we like to see tara holding back they're no stranger to tapping heads. Can they continue to do so? Looking down, they do have the bomb site to worry about. But this push does seem to have stalled just a little bit too much. But there's Sudaran onto Rapid. Salty refragging onto Landis. Four to three. Terror still alive. They have not been able to find the remaining player of the castle. Just prone, waiting, spinning around, trying to find the buck. They will. Oh, down goes Nubs. Super shorty out, looking for the frag. Nope, that's they're gonna be shut down by Oni. Man advantage back in the hand of the attackers of Columbia. 52 seconds to go. Air jab being utilized. Terror just trying to set up their line of sight. Use however they can. Great use the forest to continue to get this pressure on the force. This has been an excellent execute from Columbia as they've been able to now surmount the pressure from up above. With 34 seconds, you can set yourself up to use it. But the problem is you still need to send some down one or two players to get set up for the plant final rce or tarot drone is going to be utilized to make one final drone above corey he'll be notified have to rotate his position doesn't know where else is safe on site but 15 seconds to go you can feel the pressure mounting the blood boiling you can feel every single bit of Oh no. Oh, come, on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Wow. Plant. Terror, you have and they don't have the denial. Split seconds. St. Clair with the comeback to win it in two. Again with the comeback, by the way. Again with the comeback. Doing it twice on two different maps. Oh man, Columbia is going to watch that footage back and they're just going to be kicking themselves up and down the court for that one because honestly, <laughs> they did so well to get to that point. They did so well to get to that point. They were doing really, really well. It was one of their best attacks that they'd had. They had a confident control of the bomb site itself, right? And they had a confident control of the enemy players because there was only the one left alive. But it was the same thing that had been having a being a problem all night. They didn't mark the ro they didn't mark the roamer. They didn't keep that eye on the flanker. And, and you can't live someone, especially Terror, right? Who has been White Terror, who's been consistently the strongest player in this entire match. Just can't leave him roaming because White Terror is going to take advantage of that. Happily, will take advantage of that for free uh, to play off that top floor. Really well executed by White Terror. The the Sang Freud, the ability to come back into that and do exactly what was needed uh, is is beyond beyond approach really well done yeah uh, my general comments for Colombia in this case are probably going to be rather similar uh extremely structured and, and I, I think the final step is going to be little adaptations of one understanding your opponent for the week and how you're going to adapt yourself um and two is going to be following through on a clear narrative. It's clear what you're trying to get towards. You're trying to get towards that plant. Um, how are you going to be and making calls to be more hasteful? How are you going to seize opportunities before it's too late? There's clearly a good amount of information. Um, but I, I think a few times you're going to have to pause that VOD, ask a player, what are you doing and why? Um, this is my favorite question to ask, and it, it, it's, a, it's a very hard question because sometimes uh, you're not thinking. Sometimes you're going through the motion, when, especially when it gets this long where I'm doing this. This is my function, all done and dusted. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's that active brain power that will make the difference. And if you're constantly remembering and even mid-round saying, what are you doing and why? Ready for this push? Uh, everyone's ready. It, it's, it could be three different conversations uh, or you have two conversations going on at once, all within – uh, the, the, this voice chat, but I, I, I really liked seeing Columbia for St. Clair. That is such clear adaptation and communication, mm -hmm. uh, through your supports to your fraggers and your flex. Um, uh, Terra is going to be giving nightmares to their, their opponents. And I'm really interested to see how the St. Clair saints are going to progress throughout the season and the adaptations and progressions. Cause we know we're going to see it. We know we're going to see the, the improvement. These rosters are just getting back together. They're looking to make a name.
Yeah, and that's the that's the truth of it here, Banks. That you know, for a first game, um, I know that's got to be frustrating. We said it before. I know it's got to be frustrating for Columbia, but you know, there's a lot to be learned. I think for both of these teams, right? And there's a lot of growth, which is good. And you know, to get a game like this in the early season, where there's a lot of stuff that you can go back and you can look at it, and you can be like, hey. This is something that we can prove upon on both sides of the ball. I think we'll do them well. They were genuinely evenly matched opponents for the most part. And I think that's really helpful for a team to get that kind of matchup right out the gate. But unfortunately,